Isaac. Yeah. Isaac. Isaac. Isaac HP. Man. Sweet the man with the last name that's initial. How are we? Yeah, good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. It's good to have you. Like, honestly, for the people who just started watching. Actually, let me say the welcome, actually. I was already going into it. Welcome to episode of God Knows What of Sweet Lemon. Today, I have Isaac HP. I guess I'm very excited to have. Um, oh, yeah. Listen, I feel like we've been trying to get this together for, like, quite a long time. Uh, like two weeks. How long was it? <laughs> it's probably been like three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's too it's long. It's like a me. long time. But. It's like my TikTok, like lack of attendance, man. I need that. I needed everything quickly. But look, man, it's good to have you. Like, like, what have you been up to today? You've been doing anything creative, anything filming? Uh, nothing creative today apart from tax stuff. Oh, my God. So yesterday was really fun. Me and my friend are making music. Oh, so yeah. we're like, just like hanging out. like, mm. And then I did like a little bit of filming with some friends yesterday. And like, yeah, but you know, it's been really fun recently, but like, I'm not doing like, I'm, I'm not focusing on TikTok as much anymore. Really? Yeah. I'm low key quitting. Interesting. Yeah. Why? Why? I don't want to do it anymore. That's just the, I think I said this to you last time that we spoke, like, I feel like everyone with TikTok has this love hate relationship. Yeah. Everyone's kind of just like, look. I know this app really helps. I know it's done loads for me. It's so good for promoting yourself and stuff. But I feel like a lot of people kind of see it as a deal with the devil, kind of. Like, it's definitely fun. Mm. Like, I enjoy it. And yeah. I have enjoyed it. I've been peddling it for four years. Mm. And I'm at the point now where I'd actually rather be irrelevant for five years than be incredibly relevant from hustling it out with the content every day. Like, I'd rather, yeah. like... I'd rather be irrelevant for for five years than be incredibly relevant for a year. Yeah, doing this kind of stuff. I see. Do like you... I don't enjoy what I'm doing at the minute or mm -hmm. what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've just got to the point where I don't enjoy it anymore. Really? Yeah. What is which part of it don't you enjoy? Which part of it do you feel like is like fuck? I liked when I did weirder stuff mm. and then it ended in a short film. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. And now I'm doing like sketches yeah and I, the sketches can be fun for sure but like where is it going yeah it doesn't go anywhere mm -hmm. it's like it's just like constant every day and it's like i used to tie it up when i did the minion stuff when i did the orphan mm. stuff yeah it was repetitive people found it annoying but it ended yeah. in this short film and some people would call me an artist <laughs> some people some people would say that and now that isn't happening mm -mm. like because i've completely given it up for money yeah, yeah. you know what i mean That's... this stuff i'm doing right now is brand friendly interesting ads ads are interested in me mm. i'm corporate yeah you know what i mean yeah but i hate it but like you but know? like why like what what is where was the initial switch like where was the point where you were like you know i'm not doing what i used to do like was that a conscious thing yeah like it yeah. was just like a part of me was like I put so much money into a short film that didn't do that well. Mm. And it and then I was like, fuck. Like, yeah. Like, I need to I need to be more business savvy. And I am, I understand the business of what I'm in right now. Yeah. And I'm not against doing brand deals. Yeah. It's fun. Like it, it, there is a certain level of it where it's like it, I like it. Yeah. But like I can't be doing this. Like I'm at the point now where I can't be doing what I'm doing now. Yeah. In five years. Interesting. I can't be doing it. Mm. And it's like, I just I'm bored. Mm. Like every single day I wake up and I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Like yeah. I know that I'm going to make a sketch and it will get half a million views or a million views or, or however much it gets. And I'll be in other people's videos yeah. doing their sketches and that, yeah. that will also get views. So it's like, oh, I'm getting views. Mm. That means that's success. Mm. I'm doing well. But I go home and there's still this itch in me, yeah. which is like, I don't feel tired. Yeah. I feel drained interesting you know where like you want to feel tired from work mm. you want to go home and feel like oh that was good i did a good day's work yeah you know what i mean yeah i don't feel that when i'm doing this kind of stuff anymore as much like i go home and i feel a little bit like oh yeah like do you feel like is it because it, to a certain extent what you're doing could be seen as easy or do you feel like it's what you're getting from it so do you need a certain amount of exertion from what you do like cognitively or physically or what yeah like the, it's, it's just doing that every single day yeah doing that every single day and like and also like this is another point this is another thing that i i'm, I'm like 
battled with for so long. One reason yeah. why I was never, um, how do you explain it? This is what, one reason why it took me a while to realize this. Yeah. Is because how I grew up, mm -hmm. um, all my family are working factory jobs. Yeah. Or they're all on benefits. Yeah. Very working class. Yeah. No one, you know what I mean? Like yeah, very yeah. like low, uh, low income people in my family because i grew up that way yeah. i felt like i couldn't complain in the creative space that i'm in because it's a privilege to be in it mm. so i felt like i couldn't go i couldn't be like no yeah so so now I'm, I'm putting my foot off the pedal with that stuff and i'm like i don't care about being seen mm -hmm. i don't care about if i'm not seen for two weeks because yeah. i'm working on a bigger project yeah i don't care there was like fear of being like forgotten Oh, wow. But it's like it's like when I worked I worked at a bleach factory, right? And when you're <laughs> and, and and like when you're at the bleach factory, it was like you're you're screwing caps on. Yeah. And and then all the bottles go, you know, I was working yeah. at uh you know, screwing all the caps on the bottles. Yeah. And yeah. then it all goes down the line. Is that and a real it, thing? And then yeah, yeah, so I was screwing all the caps on the bottles or the yeah. disinfectant and I was doing that five days a week oh my for like three and a half months right Fuck and man. i was doing that and like oh some people have to do it for a lot longer no, so course, it's tough course, yeah. and then but this is the metaphor is like all of that product that you're creating goes and yeah. you don't see what the product is doing yeah. you don't see the work you've done because mm. it just disappears yeah you know and like and like, is there some the element of that with like the Instagram, TikTok stuff where it's like, There's a point, you don't get to see the tangible effect. It's, it's, it's like you want to build a house. You don't always want to like put up shelves. I see. Yeah. You know, but what is a ha what is a house to you? Well, like, like, it's just these short films that I was doing. These these things where like I had something that tied the knot and I had a bigger project that I was working on. Yeah. Now I'm working on these bigger projects and like, I'm blessed that like ad deals and doing all of this stuff has like means that i can hire two camera people and i can do all this stuff and i can i can create these bigger projects um but what i was, I was trying to say that like just making content just making quick things just relying on oh when's the, when we're gonna get the next bag when's yeah. the next when's when's the next big big load of money coming in yeah. when does that happen like it feels like you're just making stuff and it just disappears. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, not that I'm saying, oh, the short films that I made on YouTube were like in classics. In yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, it's going to last forever. Yeah, like, yeah, people are going to yeah. look back at it in 100 years. Like, no, yeah. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say is it filled my creative yeah. spirit more it's than not... anything I've ever made. What, you do you, know? what would you say, like, for you, for someone who's gone like gotten a big audience, gotten things that didn't get a big audience. Did you still feel the same level of fulfillment when you made something and no one saw it? Uh, so, so uh, say that again. So if, some, <laughs> some, so if you made someone, if you made something yeah. and no one saw it, like got fuck all views, did that still fulfill you to the same amount as when you get like millions of views? No, I'd always want to get views. You'd always want to get views. Yeah. So it's not just about the making of the thing that actually fulfills you necessarily. Uh, I like things that are seen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the process of making it. Yeah. Before it's even out. Yeah. Creating a longer project. Mm -hmm. Like a short film that takes a month. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that, it feels way better of than any tiktok i've ever made mm. even though like it's a weird thing like it also it's cringy it feels cringy talking about it but like yeah i nah, don't man. know no nah, man i think i think i mean the thing is like i think it's very it's very difficult when you're talking about like creative stuff because always with like creating stuff um there can be a judgment of like oh you're what are you talking about like people are doing real stuff blah 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 like being a creative isn't a real thing whatever but it's like it's a job and but the thing is what i realized because i'm like i'm a doctor as my audience knows that's my that's my day job what, yeah. what i realized is like when i was in the periods of my life where I went, so I went to, I went to a school that really allowed me to be creative, to be artistic, to do music, all that stuff. It was an absolute privilege. And when I went to uni, I didn't get forced to do that stuff. Yeah. And I kind of just thought like, oh, you know, who cares? You know, I'm living a life, whatever. Then I realized like through my second year, I got to a point where I was like, fuck, like, why do I feel kind of miserable? And mm. it was because I wasn't doing anything creative anymore. Yeah. And it's actually, it's not necessarily like, uh, 
a thing you do because you want people to love you or you want an audience, whatever. Like there is a thing in in people who make stuff where it's like I have to make stuff. It's yeah. like it's a compulsion and it's a thing you have to do because it gives you a sense of self. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I feel like when you create something, you can look at something no matter what it is, and you can be like, I did that. Exactly. And that represents me. Yeah. And I have this physical thing or something that is there that represents how I feel, mm -hmm. my ideas and my experiences. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And is that so for you, you don't feel like you can do that in the medium of TikTok? I can. You can. It's just I'm bored of it. I see. But like, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> like I did that. Like and it's not that I'm not gonna continue doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I've quit forever. Yeah. It's just like this year, I'm making sure that I don't spend too much energy focusing on getting like, just focusing on like getting one video a day. Yeah. Like, I just don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've just, and I don't care if it, it flops for a year. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I can chill. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, it's like I enjoyed it when it was when it was fun. Yeah. But like I want a challenge and like I always challenge myself with with TikTok anyway. I always set myself targets, mm -hmm. you know? Like I with with two different accounts doing well, battling the two accounts. So like I've got like one account 4 million, another account 3 million. Yeah. Uh, What's followers. the other one? You've got the There's a, there's one called Isaac HP and there's yeah. one just like Isaac HP backup karaoke. Okay. Right? <laughs> and that's and that's that's because I had a, I had an account called Isaac HP karaoke. Yeah. And I was I made that account because it was like I just want a fun account. Yeah. And I was like I'm just going to sing songs really badly. Yeah. And then it just turned into something else. Yeah. And then I lost a password to that. Yeah. So I had to make a backup one. <laughs> so the Isaac HP karaoke has 100,000 followers. <laughs> and the backup account to that has 3 million it's followers. One of those, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but but like but like so I was just like it was fun for me. It was creative. It was yeah. like let's see like let's try and say this and th this will be like a sound that people will use or something like that, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like this this I find this funny. This is like this is a cringe thing to say. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if someone said this? Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and like uh and that that was really fun like and, and i still will do that i'm just not i just don't want to put as much energy into doing it yeah anymore. because it doesn't i don't get as much back from it you know mm. i don't get that like wow yeah yeah you know what i mean it seems like it's more the nov it's the novelty that you're chasing like the the feeling that you are doing something new that fulfills you rather than it being the thing itself yeah, yeah like you can you can procrastinate with attention. Yeah. Like, isn't that mad? That is kind of true. Like, yeah. you can actually procrastinate with getting attention. Yeah, you can. Like, you can make stuff that's going to get you loads of attention yeah. that you don't want to make. Yeah, yeah, that is true. At, to put you off doing what you really want. Like, I didn't even fucking know hell. that you could do that. Fucking hell. But, like, man. you can actually, like, procrastinate with viral fucking TikTok. <laughs> 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 like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it's crazy. It's, and that is that is a first world problem. That is a first <laughs> <laughs> God. That is, imagine imagine like in some fucking slum somewhere like, <laughs> like what the fuck is this white guy talking about <laughs> we have a big audience yeah. in slums yeah yeah someone fucking <laughs> be like oh my gosh yeah. i can't do anything because i'm making so many viral tiktoks yeah yeah That's all, what is a tiktok yeah yeah what is a tiktok oh what? man right. <laughs> that's so funny yeah that's that's so true it's also like you, you know Having these sort of feelings about your job, and also mm. realizing how privileged your job is, yeah, but it's like, like it's like you, but but it's like you know you can have the right to talk about that, you know, no, of you course. Can, like even even if you're, and that's what I had to learn through going to therapy, yeah, and like, um, and and I have a lot of guilt because of how I gr grew growing up poor, yeah, I have a lot of guilt for how I ended up right now for how i am financially doing i see is that because of how you, know? you got there or because of being Be financially stable because i go stop? i go back and i feel like things are, are broken mm. still really you know i go back and i feel like oh my god like this place that i grew up in and and the, the not that not that you know my my family members shouldn't be working those jobs mm. i'm not against that like i'm not saying no one should be working in, in a factory like people some people like doing those jobs and I, i've met people who like doing those jobs but it's like you go back and you see you see the the, the struggle was still there and i'm i can't i'm not in a position to 
take family members out of that. Mm. So it's like I'm I'm doing well for myself and going back and seeing, not that I'm slagging anyone off that I know, mm-hmm. but you, you going going back and being like, oh, like that place that I ran away from, mm. that I grew up in, mm. is still that place. That's and it didn't get turned into a magical place that I wanted it to be because yeah. I left. Yeah, you know, like I go back and it's still that place and like, and it still hurts. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because like, no, I, I see because it's the lack of opportunity you have there. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So because it, it, it makes sense. I mean, because if you're in a position where you're like, you've done well, you've moved past it, like and you're going back and things are still the same. Like, I get why that would make you be like, fuck, like I it, it's almost like this place has stood still. Like for me, the closest that I can identify is so I grew up, grew up in Zimbabwe. But like like I was saying before, my family are relatively well off. Like, I'm a Zimbabwean in the UK, went to uni here. So, like, I have to be at least relatively well off. And it's like, going back, it wasn't necessarily reflecting on my immediate family, but reflecting on the country that I left. Like, I grew up, I moved here when I was, like, eight. So I spent most of my life here. But, like, going back there and seeing what I left, I was, like, kind of like, fucking hell. Like, I can't believe people live like this i can't believe people live in a country like that and it's like seeing my grandparents my cousin still living in this place you're like god like it's 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 kind of you i do get the sense of guilt to a certain extent yeah yeah. kind of especially for me personally because it's like my dad's dad was really was was like a good level of well off but like he wasn't rich like at all my dad Total talks about how he used to walk to school like barefoot. Yeah. And like he like was well off for a Zimbabwean, but he wasn't well off at all on the global on, on the scale. Yeah, yeah. In the West. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But so he and he of his six siblings, he was the only one who went off to do like, well, two of them went off to do really well. Mm. And so I see my cousins and I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> like I am the only one and not even from my own effort, from my dad's effort. I am the only one who's not in this anymore you like you can't afford to come here yeah and that's even more of a like sense of guilt because you can't like I'm, it's not me it's my dad yeah it must be mad like having to have that conversation with people i guess when you go back yeah and, like exactly yeah so i can relate i can relate to a certain extent but it is uh it is i mean what what are you meant to do like not continue living yeah the life you just have to be aware aware of that exactly you yeah. know exactly like you gotta be aware you do yeah you know like like for you like so at this point let's say so you got you got tiktok youtube uh yeah ish yeah yeah yeah. instagram yeah yeah anything else uh right right now i'm working on some things but i don't want to say what it is yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's like a big thing yeah it's not a big thing right now i'm working on my oscar <laughs> nah, but w- what we're doing though is that is really cool. Yeah, like no, the, the stuff that we're filming is like I hope it is that I just hope it's really I just hope. Yeah, I even know. I think I know what you're talking stuff. about as well. It's just, and it's like I it's just like wait. a fun thing. Like I yeah. just I don't know. Like, even if it doesn't like go crazy, I just I just like it's, it's just, just, it's fun just so it. much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So tell so so what so oh, those are the three things and then stand up. Yeah. Yeah. How's yeah. that going? Not good. No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean? What did you well, mean? it's going. On. I mean, not, it's not going to create like I'm. I'm. I did like a few gigs. Yeah. Like I've been like doing some little open mic nights. Mm. Even though I could do a show and have like those people come. Yeah. So, like to like like that's what I did before. Like, I I I've just been enjoying like like g- going and doing like a small stand up set mm. and like working on like a few jokes. Yeah. And like, you know. Like when when I did Henry Rowley's gig and you yeah. were there, that's where I met you. Yeah, and uh and I I changed like this little bit about the like a joke about the air fryer. That was and, it, good. and it just like and it landed really well. It did. And, I, and I was like, that's so sick. Like that <laughs> felt so good to like just go there and like like work on this like like I, I had like ten minutes of material. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like and not even that. Like yeah. But like to have like to just like have that joke land was so good. Yeah. Yeah. But like uh, stand up isn't like going crazy right now. Like. But um, 
you know, I'm doing the odd gig here and there. Yeah, but yeah. that's it. But I want, I, I would do want, I do want to pick it up. Yeah, it's it is kind of just finding the time sometimes. Mate, you're good to go like, and do. You're good, like as in, like I think, I think it's quite, it's quite easy to think, oh, influencer doing stand up, but like you did, you've done stand up for like a while. Like you're yeah, like legitimately. That's why. That's that's, go, that's why like a lot of these, you know, new, like these a lot of. If I did a show at Edinburgh Fringe, yeah, right this year yeah and put as seen on tiktok on the poster <laughs> like if i did that every single fucking comedian on face every open mic comedian on facebook would be like oh another tiktoker <laughs> fucking coming here taking our crowd taking our crowd they never did the circuit i've done more open mics than most of you yeah like i did more of that i did that when i was 16 yeah i started tiktok at 20 <laughs> i was doing open mics way before some of you even did that shit <laughs> Like, so don't talk to me yeah. about like me hacking the system. Like yeah. you did Zoom. I'm not I'm not listening to anyone who did fucking Zoom gigs <laughs> during lockdown. <laughs> like if you did a Zoom gig during lockdown, if you did one Zoom gig during lockdown, <laughs> I will not listen to you. I will not listen to what you have to say about oh. trying to get an audience or promoting yourself <laughs> because you did a Zoom gig. That's oh, it. Man, doing you, Zoom you, gig. you failed forever. I don't care if you get a fucking Netflix show. You did a Zoom gig. <laughs> You know what I mean? Never done a Zoom gig. I've never done a Zoom gig. Yeah, that's like that's like 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 you know you literally see people on Facebook complaining about TikTok shows yeah. on, and that, there is obviously a bit to it, but it's like it's always so salty. Yeah, but like, like yeah, it's like I you've mean, done, like all you do is like bring a nights in London. Like shut up, <laughs> like shut up. Like you think you think you're ever gonna fucking. <laughs> But you think like you think you had a chance against the TikToker anyway? Oh, you think you God. had a chance, at Edinburgh? Get a grip. You, think you got a chance. I love that. But you never had, you never like <laughs> like yeah, it's so true. People do get so salty because it's like they think, oh my god, this guy, he's hacked his way to the top. But it's like it's almost your your situation is kind of funny because it's like you got you've had the worst of both worlds. Like you've worked really hard. <laughs> then got the TikTok, and then everyone's like, "Ah, oh, fuck this guy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. got the TikTok. Not like everyone was like, "Ah, oh, fuck this guy." But I remember like a comedian was like, "Oh, like, don't listen to what they're all saying." I was like, "What? What, what, what are they all saying?" I was like, "What? What? But they're all just saying shit about me now." Like, <laughs> like just because like, I got some fucking followers during oh, lockdown, it was don't like crazy. To what they're all saying. Don't listen to what they're all saying. You should. You shouldn't. But I, I think. I think. I think the thing is. The thing is that makes me laugh is I feel like a lot of comedians have this weird thing against like TikTok people and that kind of thing. But they're like, oh, they're getting an audience. But it's like stand-up comedy is not a dignified art form. Like people like need to respect it and put the time in, respect it's hard and all that stuff. But this isn't serious work. It's not meant to be taken so harsh and yeah. like seriously all the time. It's just like making people laugh. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, that is true. And like a good show will be a good show. Yeah. Like it's like this whole thing where it's like, you know, some comedians are acting like like a TikTok show like is no worse than like someone doing a whole show who's only done like twenty five minute spots. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's also the same level. You're gonna get like a similar level of shit. Exactly. Like, yeah. And yeah, like you know, I've had it before. I do my own shows, mm -hmm. and like people think, oh, if people come to see you, like that show is always gonna be good. Mm. because people are there to see you yeah. that's not true like i've had people i've had like uh, like sold tickets for my own hour yeah. and people have come to see it and i've bombed in front of them for a whole hour seriously and they don't they're not licking my ass that they're that's... like they 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 are like this is shit you could have done better so it's like people aren't actually like like i don't know people have this mentality where it's yeah. like oh because it's yeah yeah because it's like people have come to see you and it's not like a stand-up audience because yeah. they just saw you from tiktok yeah it's like yeah. no i've done shows that have been atrocious <laughs> yeah and, I, and you do still learn like i've learned stage you do learn stuff from doing those shows yeah. but also like you know I have done the gigs and stuff like that. I should do more of them for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've been going longer than I have. That's the thing as well. Like, it's like, like props to you. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, that is the, the, the good I mean, thing. You're probably better than me. I, I nah, think. I think I'm but, uh, do you think? That's, that's very kind of you. I, but you're good. You're good. I'm, all, I'm okay. <laughs> I think I'm okay. I'm not great. <laughs> no, but you know what I think, actually? I think, I think the thing is about stand-up is it's like i feel like my style of stand-up is much easier to get good at not that i'm sick but i'm like i'm just a straight stand-up comedian do you know what i mean yeah. but like with you it's like it's kind of like like whatever you think of james a caster whatever whether <laughs> you think he's good or not yeah his style would have taken a long time 
to get good at. Because at yeah, first, he, weird, yeah. yeah, he would have just bombed. He would have just bombed on stage for ages. Because like, can you imagine? Can you imagine someone like him, but like with no experience, trying to actually make it like work? It would just be like it would just be like people just wouldn't vibe with it. What I what I realized from um, and that 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 is true. Mm. Uh, what what I realized from um from like doing specifically like when i so i was i started doing stand up in norfolk right because that's where i'm from Damn. so i was doing it like norwich and then i go to like cambridge or like sort of play ipswich you know mm -hmm. like kind of places around that area of mm -hmm. england um but then when i moved to brighton when i was 19 i was in london like three four days a week mm -hmm. doing like five minute spots <laughs> at these like open mic <clears throat> nights um and when i was doing that uh i started to realize <laughs> that there's two types of comedians mm. and it was the young comedian who's just started like you know they're in like they don't they've done like 10 gigs yeah and the young comedian would always copy james acaster yeah to the point where they do the arm thing yeah like yeah james yeah. he kind of puts his arm up like this yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah, they, they yeah. stand there like this is awkwardly like james and they do the voice the james yeah. acaster voice right? yeah yeah they do that yeah but then you got and that was like the young guy young straight yeah. guy yeah. and you got the old straight man would do a Stuart <laughs> lee and they would like <laughs> Be like you know, a bit overweight yeah. and like you know, old and yeah. like, and like, <laughs> and then they go on there and they'd be like a little bit drunk. Yeah, and they yeah. just thought that like if you just hated the audience, that they would <laughs> get how the intellectualness of it. All, yeah, all, you know. Yeah, no, and then so I kind of saw that quite a lot. Yeah, you get like the Stuart Lees and the James A. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. Yeah, honestly, I think every time I've drunk on stage, I've regretted it. Really? Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's this trope of like people being like. Oh, you know, you could do stand up after a few pints. And some people can, legit. But for me, even at Henry's gig, like Henry Riley's gig, like I had a Guinness on stage because I was drinking. Because I, because the way he does a show is he'll do 20 minutes at the top or whatever amount of time. And then you'll go on. And like, so he was doing the 20 minutes and I was like, yeah, I have time to neck a Guinness. And then I just left it somewhere, lost it for a while. Then I found it and I was like, shit, now I have half a Guinness and I have to take it on stage because I have this weird fear that although I look like this, I might get spiked. <laughs> <laughs> But, bro we're, we're fucking baby reindeer out mate <laughs> yes yes yeah. baby reindeer you were telling me to watch it yeah you should watch that show man is it that is it like oh one? it's fucking spooky bro really yeah it's like a horror film really or horror series horror it feels series. like that it feels like a cycle it's more like psychological yeah. also it's just like dark like really it's a really dark fucking series yeah. you recommend it you... oh i don't know if yeah everyone's recommending it at the minute yeah are you a big <laughs> tv guy uh not really uh not really nah a film or TV? DVD. DVD. <laughs> Just anything that was on DVD. <laughs> we didn't. I didn't have a TV as a kid, so we, we, saw we, did, we didn't have like free. Like there was a lot of time where we didn't even have actual TV. Really? So we just had the. The, uh, the the DVDs, yeah. So you just pop in whatever. So like, I, I've missed out on a lot of cultural films, <laughs> but I've watched like the these weird films, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like over the hedge, I've watched that. <laughs> like 20 times <laughs> like like or uh the magic roundabout yeah i've yeah. watched that like a billion times <laughs> Over the head slapped. yeah yeah like Over the but then slapped. like it's like some deep, yeah yeah there's just some things you know a lot about you get like, like weird niche dvds you know what I mean? yeah you found at like cash generator <laughs> and i just sort of pop them in yeah do you have, but you have like netflix and all that now oh yeah yeah, yeah. now i watch loads of stuff yeah yeah what do you uh, apart from baby rain friday night dinner oh yes Friday. i can night always dinner. watch that that's good uh but i like i like documentaries you know but i like Theroux. yeah i like louis Farou. he's a classic I, yeah louis Farou's really good uh i'm trying to think like what i'm watching now I don't know. oh man it's, i mean the thing is there's so much there's no much stuff i feel like i've kind of stopped watching tv because i was like big into film and tv when i was a kid mm. but do you remember love film love film love film it was kind of it was basically no one ever remembers it it's like <clears throat> you know it was like netflix but english mm. and it was basically like you could you know how like you know like with netflix oh you and you got the dvd sent to you exactly yeah. yeah and then amazon brought bought love film and mm. then made prime so that's how that's how it oh okay yeah so i was into love film and i'd get the dvds and all that stuff and it was so how old yeah. are you i'm like seven <laughs> It's like seven. How old are you now? I'm 25. Oh, so you're not that old? No, I'm not. It just sounds like a crazy thing to have. <laughs> I was like, how old are you? I was like, are you 40 years old? Are you like a 20 year old man doing like rent, getting DVDs on you? 
That's crazy. How old are you? <laughs> you looked at me like. Also, seven. Like, did you have your own subscription at seven? I, my mum had the subscription, but I had. You could write power. stuff. Could you write stuff into it? Like? Yeah, no, I had complete. It was for me. That's she, so she much power to me. have. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, it was for me. Yeah. That's mad. No one else used it. It was just for me. Yeah. There was, I literally would rent everything. Like, I watched The Godfather, I watched Goodfellas. I just went through loads of films. You watched all the 18 plus films? I did. My, so it was like very bad parenting looking back at it. <laughs> but I watched I don't everything. think bad films actually do anything to you. Like, I think every kid in the UK has watched like fucking crazy shit when they shouldn't have. You know? Definitely. Definitely. Like, like Jackass. Yeah. Like we all like had, a, I had a sleepover and we all, and I brought the DVD round. Oh. <laughs> and we all watched it and I was like, what the fuck? Like, you this guy shitting in a toilet like <laughs> in public and like you're all kids and you're watching you're like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck is this? Yeah. Like did you watch um, WWE? That was kind of like a bit older. Uh, Like I feel WWE was more for like 13 year olds no nah, uh, that was when that? i was like six yeah but I, I mean it's like it's quite violent like you shouldn't show that to like it is but it's bro wwe's sick bro. it's fucking sick it's fucking sick john cena can do no wrong i had the games you know yes smackdown versus raw on which console playstation oh your playstation boy oh yeah playstation 3 yeah yeah oh, man that was just and smack. there was the uh, my mate had the smackdown shut your mouth what does that mean? and that was i don't know what it's called it's called smackdown shut your mouth i think that's what it's called and it was um it was like an old ps2 game i see I and see. that was really good I and see. that had like uh that was where i don't yeah but I remember, like, we believed it was real. Mm. We were like six years old, and we believed like wrestling was real. Yeah. And his dad came in, and then he called us all gay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Why are you watching all these gay men?" And they, in the ring, he was like a proper bloke, and he was like, "Why the fuck are you watching all these gay men in a fucking ring for? <laughs> all sweaty. Why are you doing that for?" And he was like, "You know that's all fake, right?" <laughs> And I was like, what, what, they're not really gay. <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, they're fighting. <laughs> they are gay. <laughs> I love that. I love when people say that, like, uh, you know, it's all fake, right? Like, yes, of course. Well, it's we fake. thought it was real. I, d I mean, everyone thinks it's real up to a point. Then you realize it's fake and you're like, sure. That's like telling a kid that Santa Claus doesn't exist. That is true. That's, <laughs> like, that's like the level of it now. Yeah, like saying there's no Rey Mysterio out there. God, yeah. He was the best. Because I generally thought he walked around with that mask <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Like he could never take the mask off like during sex. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> then it was like, what are you hiding, bro? <laughs> what is he hiding? Are you a sex offender or something? <laughs> <Is it? laughs> like, why do you ever want to take the mask off, bro? He's on a like, register. He's on yeah, a register. Like Rey Mysterio, man. weird guy. Yeah, he was a weird guy. Oh man. That's Mexican a... wrestling, what is it with the masks? I don't know. I think I assume there's some deep cultural thing that we just don't know about. Because but... yeah, Mexico versus have you realized how fucking racist WWE is? Not racist. He's a bit race war, isn't it? Oh yeah, like um, and you got the, the stereotypes. Stick together. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely do. Like they always got like a guy with a turban and called him some <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like the Great Sheik or something yeah. like that. And, and also, when it was a black guy, it was always like really gangster. Yeah, yeah. Or like there was one that was literally like an African prince. Even there was there was Finley, who was a stereotypically Irish guy, yeah, who him, walked yeah. around with the little person. <laughs> yeah, with the leprechaun. <laughs> yes, yes. Who was he called? What was he uh, called? Um, I think the thing he held was called a shillelagh. Yeah. But I don't know what the guy was called. I don't know what the guy was called. But he was like supposed to be like a leprechaun. <laughs> like that was what they were going for. But also though, like that was the golden age of WWE. Like, it was. Was, like, <laughs> like when it was like the race wars and shit. Like, <laughs> also that. But then he realized like John, John Cena sort of plays like the white savior role. He does kind of. Like, he kind of plays like. I mean, he's literally like a chiseled American dream. But like slightly gangster down with the kids. You, know, like, <laughs> hey, you, man, you, you can't see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe people used to walk around doing this as if they were cool. Yeah, that was like a threat. Yeah, that was like, oh, mate, put that down. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that in the streets, bro. Yeah, and then you had like The Undertaker who was just dead. And that oh, was yeah. his whole thing. I like The Undertaker because he was like quite an original spooky character. Yeah, he was. And Kane, his like sort of oh, weird. Oh, Kane. Kane was like when The Undertaker was like, D -d don't make me get my brother. <laughs> and he was just yeah. bold. Don't make me get my brother. He's like the guy, the kid they keep in the basement. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like the hey you guys of wrestling Kane. Like, <laughs> he's going to come out and bite you. <laughs> like you don't want like, you don't want to. Yeah, if Undertaker gets Kane out. that's fine. Yeah, he's feral. He's feral. And like I remember he used to do a thing. Like one of them, I think, used to do a thing where they like roll their eyes back and you wouldn't be able to see their pupils. Yeah, that was Undertaker, I think. Yeah, I think that was like his big deal. And that's the thing that got him that thing. And you forget those people are making millions, probably. Like the people doing WWE. Like Yeah, yeah. But the weird thing is, is like 
wrestling is also a thing that people do at like a low level. Like there are open mics kind of of wrestling. Yeah. And then it gets bigger and bigger and becomes WWE. Me and my friends went to one once. Really? Yeah. My girlfriend, I had, I don't have a girlfriend anymore, but we know it. But my ex girlfriend, <laughs> we, uh, she came around like to see me. We we're quite long distance. She came over to yeah. my mate from back home in Norfolk. He came to see me as well. And uh, I was like, well, what are we going to do tonight? Yeah. And I was, we were, like, we were listening to like Shawn Michaels, like the music. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it was Shawn Michaels. Do you remember that song where it was like, um, I'm just a sexy boy. Yes. Sexy boy. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm not, not your boy toy. Boy, boy toy. I'm yeah. just a sexy boy. <laughs> so we were listening to that and we we're like, oh, I want to see some wrestling. So yeah. we searched up like, where's the nearest wrestling place? Oh my God. Like, what's the near, what, what, when's the next? And there was one happening like on the night. Yeah. We had to get a train to Lewis. Oh my And we God. went there and we were like, oh, this is going to be crazy. We got really high. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, we like, we were like, it was so funny. Like, like we were like, we got, like, we had a few drinks and we got like really fucking high. <laughs> got the train to Lewis, like absolutely stoned out our minds. Went to this like fucking, uh, yeah, we went to this uh, wrestling place. Yeah. And it was just, we thought it would be like American where there's like people our age. Yeah, yeah. We were just like obsessed with wrestling there. I don't know yeah, why we had that yeah. idea. It was just little kids. <laughs> it was like little kids and their parents all around this ring. And then there was like one, there was one adult by himself with an iPad filming the whole thing. <laughs> and every now and then he'd like heckle one of the villains. He'd be like, he'd be like, he'd be like you suck, you suck. <laughs> and then he'd like filming the iPad on his iPad. <laughs> Like he filmed the whole thing on his iPad, like he was gonna go home <laughs> and watch it and again. watch it again. Maybe he was pirate. And he it. was like obsessed with these like characters that like all worked at Tesco, <laughs> like <laughs> like in their day job. Like it was so funny. And oh. like we were just there, like we stood out crazy. We yeah. stood out. Yeah. Now I can imagine. I mean, the thing is, is, like, there's a low level of everything. Like, I I wonder. I mean, people probably say this about comedy. Like, how do you get into that? How do you do? You just start getting fit and then go and apply to these kind of things i wonder what if you get into wrestling yeah like how do i say because how because it's a sport side it's kind of yeah it's like a performance they're not actors like you can't just get someone who's doing broadway and make them a wrestler like it's a thing people practice and do watching it was a bit like it was like you know if you want to look at it in like a high art sense yeah it was like oh this is theater <laughs> this is theater. this is like you know and it's like a display of masculinity. Mm, it's yeah. this display of testosterone and masculinity. And it's a dance. It's a masculine dance. It you is, know? yeah. It and is. then they have characters behind and like, um, but it was really like, it was all right. I mean, it was yeah. pretty, the, some bits were like, oh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. But there was other bits where like, one, <laughs> they couldn't get like, you know, like there's like tag teams and they're always like the same characters. Yeah. Like <laughs> one of, one of them was like this crazy eccentric character with like a scarf around him. Like, and he like was kind of a little bit, I don't know how to explain him. Like he had like a leather jacket. It was like, kind yeah. of like, he was kind of like a neon biker. Yeah. He was like a weird looking character. Yeah. And there was a tag team match later on in the night. And we were yeah. like, oh, so who's the tag team guy? Yeah. Is yeah. he going to be like someone who looks like him? Yeah. But it was actually just another guy that, that was on <laughs> what? before him. That's so was his tag. But it was like another guy who just, you know, like the boring wrestlers were just like knee pads and yeah. like pants on yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 like they don't was, have like anything yeah special. yeah they have yeah. like the sort of speedos on yeah, yeah. like it was that <laughs> but he just wore half of that guy's outfit <laughs> <laughs> so the guy that came in with like the leather jacket and the neon glasses and all yeah. that shit he just put his glasses on that guy <laughs> and it was like you're my take it was like <laughs> i just thought the characters would have been yeah was there a narrative was there a narrative no no the narrative was like he doesn't like him because he stole his hat or some shit. Oh. There was one bit where the referee who was like a skinny kid got like fucking slammed to the ground. <laughs> That's what I always And that was, so, that was quite the funny. The referee is actually the best part of it. Like they'll jump from like, the other side of the ring to go one, yeah. <laughs> two, and they can just be any length of time. It's but, not standardized at all. But every now and then the referee gets violated. Yeah, know? he does. That's why we're there to see him get hit by a steel chair. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. It's like, so for you now, like stand up wise, are you going to do like a big show? Uh, I, I, I want to like just do, I want to keep on gigging yeah, and I want to keep on doing like some shows, not like every week, but like, I want to start doing like some hour shows and like build up something. Mm. I just want to build something up again and like try and find what I want this show to be. Yeah. And like just go for it. Yeah. Here's you a know? question. When you did your hour, did you feel ready? For no. Hour? You didn't? No. What made you choose? But like, no. I learned how to post an hour, like mm. how to like 
You yeah. know, some shows are really good. Some shows were really good. Yeah. Some shows are really bad. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you, sometimes you, when you're doing an hour, like you do end up just saying shit that when you don't have material, yeah. you do say shit to fill time and you, you do, do say shit to like, you think would be funny and then it isn't. Yeah, uh, like, you know. yeah. No, it's true. I think I think an hour of comedy is so hard. <clears throat> like the, I think, I think where we are now, um, I think the special has kind of been ruined. Mm. Like people say like, oh, you know, you need to do a special. You need to do like uh, a special in comedy, an hour for Netflix, whatever. But I think it's to a point where so many people have one that, I mean, it's no longer special. But it's also, it's like, it's it's not really respecting how hard it is to actually get an hour of comedy for millions of people, mm. worth millions of people to see. And yeah, I think it's just a, it's just a trope now where, everyone eventually gets a special but i a lot of people it's hard it's hard you it's some people i think who have specials i'm like this was not good enough <laughs> like and yeah. not that i'm gonna do it i think but, there's like an idea of like getting a special where it's like it's given to you by mm. like some production company yeah but like a lot of comedians who like build their own stuff up nowadays they just yeah. film their own one yeah like yeah. you can do it with some cameras and yeah. a good a good mic setup yeah no you definitely like can. you can just film for an hour <clears throat> Like Andrew Schultz, you know, yeah, he's like yeah. a classic example of someone that really like, even though he's done Netflix specials, like he is a classic example of like someone that. Yeah, uh, just did it on their own. Yeah, did it like how he had it. He did his own special. You yeah. Know? Are you, um, are you a fan of Andrew Schultz? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't like everything, you know, but like, yeah, I think fucking it's funny as fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah he does. Also, like, <laughs> he's the kind of guy where, like, yeah, he he roasts a lot of people and stuff, and he yeah. brings up a lot of subjects, but like, yeah. people go there for that. Yeah, and it's do. not like all his crowd is like looks like him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's people of all races go there yeah. to like get jokes about them told. Yeah, I and think... his jokes aren't dumb. No, you know? they're not. They yeah. are smart. They are smart. Yeah, I think there is also a, there's yeah, I think we're not in a place where we can have someone who does that and who does it well like yeah. they're not there's not an understanding of like this is for everyone like because because there's there's an idea that like oh if you're making fun of this person you're making fun of this group or whatever you're kind of that's just your whole thing yeah, but yeah. there is a way to talk about everything and actually make fun of it yeah i think the scary <laughs> thing is like someone seeing that yeah and going Oh, I can do that. Yes, that's and then, it. And then they and then they go to an open mic, oh, and then yeah. they're just racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like I think I think that's something that like I think I know, know four open mic nights that were cancelled after their first night because people just came up and were racist. Crazy, <laughs> literally. Because the thing is, the thing is, like, um, like you have a lot of people who do the nights where you just sign up on the day, which is like great because it's cool, it's informal, whatever. But man, you can get. There is some mental illness in stand-up comedy. There yeah. is, yeah, hundred. There was a big like. I remember in twenty nineteen, there was like a big like, uh, like uh, Joe Rogan boom, mm. where it was like because of like Joe Rogan and like his crew, yeah, were like sort of documenting how easy it was, easy, but like yeah. not like documenting how like you can do it yourself and like yeah, just go yeah. just go do an open mic bro yeah, like, and like all that yeah, kind of like, stuff. Stand-up comedy is the most rewarding things I've ever done. So, so then like when that was all happening in like twenty nineteen, like I, when I was doing like this uh like the london sort of open mic circuit mm. um you you did start to realize there's a big boom of you know office worker lads mm. and it was like you know they've listened to a few episodes and it's like i'm gonna do that again. yeah which yeah. is fine you know but yeah. it, it, it that definitely was like a, a thing <laughs> i think that is i think i think it is it is fine but i think like you say the thing about let's say someone like andrew schultz like whatever you think about him yeah. whatever you think about <clears throat> him as a person or a stand-up whatever he's he's like crafted a skill yeah. like you're not like i'm not even necessarily defending andrew soul specifically like it's not about him but like people who who do who like uh say to tiptoe near the line who are good at it like it's you're doing it because that is the hardest thing to do and that's mm. what you're good at but i think some people will come into comedy and they'll be like oh yeah i can do that when they don't realize making something dark funny is the hardest thing to do because yeah. it's dark. Don't start off with that. No. I made the mistake of starting off with stuff like that. Really? Did you? Yeah, I was like fucking joking about Hitler and stuff. Yeah. Know? Like, and it was just like, and then someone was like, you need to fucking hold back a bit. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And I did. But it's like, you know, 
I was like yeah. 16. Yeah, oh, that's it was bad, fucking though. funny. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> I can't believe you started when you were 16, man. How did that even start? Like, what? where did you... Because, like you say, a lot of people had got into comedy from podcasts and stuff like that, like, in this massive boom. Like, for you, where did you start? Uh, like, what made you think, I want to do stand-up comedy? Is it like, are you one of those people who always wanted to do it? Uh, I didn't, like, always want to do it. Yeah. But there was a certain point where it was just like, oh, this will be something... I, I was just like... I want, I just want to like get out of this horrible like place that I'm in. Not mm. that I'm calling the place that I'm from horrible, but for me, it felt horrible because of I couldn't be creative. Mm. And that was an easy way out for me. I see. Was like getting out through stand up, like <clears throat> I'm knowing that there's a open mics about mm. and I can just get a train like and go and do a gig somewhere mm. and I, when i was 16 doing that mm. 16 17 just gigging around working at mcdonald's mm -hmm. and it was it was like I, I didn't want to uh it was weird i felt like i felt like i had nothing to lose mm. you don't you, you know don't. yeah because of i was there was there was I had no, like you know when people say oh they have no I had nothing yeah like it kind of felt like that in, into the sense where like if I I'm I'm not gonna lose any opportunity mm. it's not like my family wanted me to be a lawyer or be this mm. my family was just okay if I had a job mm. you know yeah, yeah and it was like but I just didn't want to have that I didn't yeah. want to work at McDonald's I didn't want to work in the factories yeah I didn't want to do that yeah so and it was like well it's okay if I fail this I'll just go work at the factory yeah yeah you know. Yeah. I'll just go work at the, I'll just go work at McDonald's. I'll just go work at uh, wherever, some place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll just be in 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 some industrial estate, you know, cornered away. Mm. You know. Yeah. So like, it kind of felt like that to me. Like, fuck, I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah. And I didn't tell anyone for ages because I was mm. so scared because I felt like I'd be laughed at for saying that's what I want to do. Mm. And did you want to do it at that point? Yeah, I knew. Just... I knew. I was like, I'm gonna. This is what I want to do. Mm. Like, and it's not like I've. I'm now a stand-up comedian. Like, I've gone on. I'm still doing like funny stuff. Well, some people find funny, but like, I'm still <laughs> doing like you know, I'm still in that world. But like, I'm not necessarily doing stand-up every day. Yeah. But like, I've I've I put myself in that direction. Yeah. You know, and I thought at that time I thought that was impossible. Yeah. I thought that was like impossible. Like I, it was like, how the fuck do I get out of this? Yeah. That I'm that I'm in. Like how the hell do I get out of it? You know? Yeah. Um No, I get it. I get it, man. That's really interesting. Like, what do you what do you think about like British comedy in terms of like the class sort of way? Like, do you think cause I feel like in American comedy you have much more of that where it's like what blue collar yeah, comedians. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like you I feel like the story of American comedians are people who like were people who were like there was nothing else that I could have done and if I wasn't for doing if it wasn't doing this, like I don't know where I'd be, blah blah blah. Like lit like if you reel them off, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, yeah, like these people, like maybe Jerry Jerry I was gonna say Jerry Simon. In, in England that. it is a bit more uh, middle class. Exactly. Comedy. Like it yeah, is. It is. But it's like it's weird, isn't it? Like I feel like it's like I think most American com com comedians would relate to what you said. But most English comedians would say yeah, you know, I did stand up because my parents could afford for me to do Edinburgh. That's yeah. like that's the. Stereotype. But that, that's that, that's the, I don't I don't know much about class systems and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But like, you do see that on the TV. You do see more middle class people. You don't always. And there is there is definitely working class. Uh, I can't think of any anyone at the minute. But there is Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I assume. Yeah, yeah, I assume. But, but he's got the accent. Yeah, that's literally the. <laughs> the only thing is, thing. I don't think I have that accent. Like people no, won't believe me. People, you don't. people will believe like that's all. That's also like you know people won't believe I grew up like working <laughs> class and poor benefits class really like yeah. not even like working class. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. People won't believe that because I don't have a fucking northern or cockney accent <laughs> and my mum doesn't have a fucking hunchback do you know what i mean like they won't believe that so i have to i get labeled as like posh or middle class like because fucking my mum likes us to simon and garfunkel you know what i mean instead of fucking oh god whatever yeah instead of whatever, whatever like, people listen yeah, to I don't know the what sugar they, babes yeah <laughs> yeah I don't I don't know. <laughs> like my mom like that yeah you yeah. know no man yeah no i get i get that yeah no it's true though it's true there are like a lot of a lot of people who do fit more in the middle class thing but i don't know have you have you experienced it being an issue like in stand-up like it's ever being an issue like like i 
I like, you know, the uh, I saw my privilege as being young. Yes. You know. Yes. Like I can afford to be poor, up, and I can yeah. afford. Like I'm not gonna go. To, I was like, I'm not gonna go to uni. There's, that's not happening. Yeah. So it's like, well, what am I gonna? Whenever, whenever all my friends go to uni, or when like not, not a lot of my mates didn't, but like when you know people mm. do go off and do that thing, what am I gonna do? Mm. You know. And it was just like, well, I'm just gonna gig and just do. Mm. I'm just gonna learn how to do stand up and just kind of slingshot myself into doing comedy. And this is like one thing that. Like, this is like one thing that like is a really good thing to think about is like when you're doing it and you feel like you're going nowhere, yeah. And then years later, you realize, fuck, I was going some like I was yeah. going somewhere. Yeah. Like I was really going for it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. Now I get you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. But you asked me about class, right? And how like yeah, that, you think yeah, that... yeah. But I mean, it's it's it's. I think I think I may get what you're saying. I mean, my skill, if anything, is I'm an incredible listener, and I get what you're saying. It's like it's you. It, you never really thought about what it was like to be not be the, to be the person. I didn't. I didn't know person. what like because you were in the thing. You were doing the thing. Yeah, I didn't even realize what it was like until I moved to Brighton. Yeah, like I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Like I thought everyone because how I grew up, I thought everyone had like you know like their dad's a drug dealer yeah. and like you know like their dad like you know. Everyone you know, you, you know a lot of criminals and you yeah. know a lot of, you, you grow up around that. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And then when you move to Brighton and everyone's parents have Wikipedias <laughs> and like, and like, and, and, and like, and then you tell a story that you think is funny about yeah. your childhood. Yeah. And they're like, fuck what? <laughs> and, they're, and they're like, you should go to therapy. It's like therapy. What the fuck? What the fuck is therapy? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's kind of weird. It's like, you kind of, and that's that's actually when I started to realize, not like a structural problem. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, oh, stand up so hard because of, I grew up this way and other people, like everyone grew up a certain way and everyone has their own experiences to share. Yeah. I'm not going to judge anyone. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I get that, I get that. But there is that point where you're, you do feel sometimes, you feel a little bit like, oh, I don't, you, you want people to have your shared experiences around you sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it makes it because easy. you don't want your stories to shock people, mm. you know. Mm. But I think I think you can either. I think there's two ways you can see it. Like, I think you can broadly speaking, you can either be the everyman who has the experiences of the everyman like Jerry Seinfeld. That I don't know how much you know about. His I like standard. Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. So his he's literally like, I'm a normal guy. Can you believe this? Like, that's literally his whole yeah, thing. Yeah. But or you can be <laughs> someone who's like, I'm so different to you that I'm pointing out what's crazy in yeah. the way you function. Yeah. So you don't have to. So it's like and I think I've definitely I can more relate to being like an outside person being like, this is I'm not I am not. I don't see myself as one of the people who watches me. I see myself as I'm on the outside and I'm watching the yeah, 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 yeah. Cuz I'm like I don't relate cuz my childhood is completely different. Oh yeah, you've had a you've had a crazy childhood. Right? Exactly, yeah. Like Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, like the thing is is like it's so it's so difficult to explain to anyone because I'm from Zimbabwe came when I was 8, which is also very unconventional. Most people are either born in a country or they come when they're adults. Yeah, yeah. But there's actually very few people who come when they're children, which is such a diff different thing. Because my girlfriend was is Nigerian eth ethnically, mm. which was born in the UK. Okay. So yeah. for her, like the mental, her mindset is completely different. Yeah. Which yeah. for her, she is just the British person. Her parents have African accents, but she's never even been to Nigeria. Okay. But for me, I've been to Zimbabwe, but not as much as like my elder sister, who's nine years older than me, who basically came when she was 18. So for her, she's like- Very different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm an adult who lived in one place and then moved to another place. That's com that's completely different. And so it's like, there's that, but then there's also the element of like, I came from a third world country, but I went to a private, private school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like, So it's like, on one hand, I'm very privileged, but then on the other hand, I'm also from a third world country. So it's like when people talk about race and they're like, oh my God, being a black person in the UK, and I'm like, yeah, kinda, I can agree, I can associate with that, but like, it's kinda would be wrong to say I'm in that game because I think- the But have you had it before just like, have you ever noticed people be a little bit slightly racist towards you? Yes, definitely. I've definitely experienced things that I wouldn't have experienced if I wasn't black. Yeah. There's no question to that. I've never experienced direct 
frontal racism, like from the 1960s. You mean like aggressive, like aggressive, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. I can't say I've, I've like mentally can I I can think of that. Like I, being a doctor, there are times when patients say things that they wouldn't say to someone else. Actually, I had to, like like what? I had, this, I had this one lady. So I was working in A and E. I had this one lady who I was seeing her. Everything was fine. Completely normal interaction. Completely normal person. And then at the end, she just says, thank you for being so easy to understand. <laughs> because she's seen so many people oh my who God. were black, who had accents that she couldn't hack it. Because she was like 80 or 90. And it's like, that's mental. That's it's mental. mental to say thank you for that. <laughs> like, exactly. tell the others. <laughs> the ones that I couldn't understand, tell them. <laughs> yeah, to, to learn how to speak. Exactly. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, it's that kind of thing. But like, to be honest, I can't say I've experienced anything that was meant in malice. But, but it's like the thing that I, for me, it's like once I open my mouth and start speaking, it, it, basically melts away unless it's those kinds of situations because yeah. that's why it's like i think it's like in the uk you have the race and the class and stuff like that but i think when people hear that i don't have a south london accent it changes things so much yeah but that's wild though isn't it it, it is, is wild that it's like an accent that um yeah puts people at ease isn't it? it's it kind is. of crazy it literally is it's like okay you're 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 at least kind of one of us that's oh. how it is, <laughs> <laughs> how it is. <laughs> but yeah but, but yeah that's why that's honestly like I was, it's a long way of saying that's why i love like doing stand-up because it's like with you you being unique and also with you as well being unique and not having a a life a life like other people is a good thing because you can use that to tell jokes yeah you can use that to make material you can use that to make videos like that is literally the whole it's thing it's weird so i never really i've only ever spoken about the podcast i never ever really used it really yeah <laughs> really i just don't see any like i i say it in podcast stuff because like when, I, when i'm when i talking about because it is a part of my emotional yeah. development or yeah. like it's a part of like what brought me here in my story and all that kind of stuff yeah but like when it actually comes to putting, <clears throat> putting stuff into it like i've never really Hmm. put it into anything i've made yeah i've always played a character that isn't who i am yeah you know? so, I, so like i never yeah yeah but i would go as far as saying as it's it's not it's not me saying it's like oh uk people are like this mm. zimbabweans are like this it's me saying you having that background forms your sense of humor yeah i guess so yeah, so it yeah. forms your perspective it forms your way of looking at stuff like yeah, I mean, I like I was actually like preparing for this podcast. I was scrolling through your videos, and it's it's so funny having met you now because yeah. I'm just like, I understand how much of a character it is. Whereas, <laughs> whereas like I thought this was just who you were, but I was like, <laughs> obviously it's a character. Obviously, you're doing yeah. a sketch. You're doing a sketch. This isn't who you are at all. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know why I do that. I feel like I I just can't. I mean, I think I'm more comfortable with myself recently. And maybe that's why one reason why I don't like to talk as much, maybe because I'm more comfortable with who I am at mm. the minute mm. and like what I, but I don't think I was comfortable with being myself on camera mm. for a while. I get that. So it was like a shield, you know? Yeah. Not that, yeah. I is you, is, is your stand up personality, are they related? But, uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, it's funny things that I think of. Like sometimes it's just like, that. sometimes that's all it is. It's like something funny that I think would be funny to say. Like, yeah. You know, like it would just be a funny thing to say. Yeah. Not like, I, I don't usually write with like, I have a perspective on uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, this is a unique perspective. Like, I guess I do. I don't know. Um, What was I going to ask? I was going to say, you, you must find it like a bit annoying. Like mm. when you say you're from Zimbabwe mm. and like, do you feel like a lot of people in the UK, they don't know? What, that what the fuck Zimbabwe is no, about? Because like I feel like a lot of people just imagine like desert, like <laughs> like and like the occasional like bit of green. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I just I because like if I said oh I'm from Iraq or I'm from Brazil or whatever, people would know how to react. Like if I said I'm from Iraq, people would be like, oh okay, that must have been difficult, whatever. Or if I said I'm from Brazil, people would be like, oh okay, whatever, Rio de Janeiro. But with Zimbabwe, they're kind of like. Uh, I don't yeah. know what to engage with. This I one. I knew it from the high inflation. Yes, that's because I knew the sort of Zimbabwe. The money was crazy there. Exactly. That's um, what everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your capital building. I don't know. <laughs> now the other thing you get is uh, like is that Rhodesia 
It used to be called Rhodesia. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because it was named after this guy called Cecil Rhodes. And that's if you have older people, they'll be like, was that Rhodesia? Because it was renamed after the war against the British. Oh, yeah, I think I saw it on the maps. Yeah, there you go. There like you old go. maps in shows and stuff. Yeah, but... that's literally, that's a cheer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, like honestly, no, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun being like also being in stand-up and being able to have that perspective because like you can just... It's just like at like at Henry's gig actually, like yeah. when the, the with the three of us were talking about how like when I was talking about racial stuff, they tensed up, yeah. and it's like that used to stop me. Whereas now I'm like, no, fuck you, this yeah. is going. I'm gonna show you this is gonna be good. Yeah, don't tense up and be all like polite. And also, it's it is it is like white people feeling like they can't laugh at your perspective. Exactly. Yeah. But like you're only making they're just trying to be polite because exactly. they have this like idea of like being cancelled at laughing at a joke like that <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like you're sort of giving them permission to in laugh. a way yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and you you you're saying it from your perspective as yeah, well yeah exactly like yeah yeah exactly <laughs> fine so a couple last questions like what's so what's next for you now like i know you can't talk about a bunch of it but for you you i know you're saying you tiktok for you isn't really something you want to focus on i just yeah so, so this po this podcast ain't like for me to plug anything really no i, just I know thought, that like it'll be that. like a, i was like it'll be a, it'll be a fun thing to do and like you know there's certain things that i've been thinking about recently and like talking to people about which is like basically how i feel about tiktok at the minute and like how like i don't really want to be focusing on it as much yeah, yeah. like i just don't want to be so like I re and it's good to have that filmed on evidence of me yeah. being like, hey, I don't want to fucking do this as yeah. much anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's okay if I don't want to do it. I don't have to hold on to this thing. Yeah, exactly. You know? So like, I'm just working on, I'm just going to say, I'm just, I'm just working on longer projects. And mm. I don't care if they all flop. Mm. Like this year, I'm just going to put money into making longer projects. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> longer thing. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, and like, longer And stuff. doing like a bit of everything. So yeah. learning how to do a bit of I'm still going to do sketches. I'm still going to do all that kind of stuff. Like I'm still going to film on TikTok. Um, I'm still going to get ad deals, you know. Yeah. But like, it's just it's just going to be less. Yeah. Like yeah. not that you know, not that anyone cares. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like lots, lots, lots of people are begging for me to make a TikTok. <laughs> Please. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Please. But like that is just where I am at. Like, yeah. I just. Nah, man. I just. Yeah. Got me asked. <laughs> <laughs> nah, people love your stuff. It's a cool, it's a cool thing that you have. I think it's such a fun situation to be in. Like, you don't have like a manager or agent or anything, do you? Or no, I had one for a bit, but it didn't turn out well. Fair. And yeah. I was just like, fuck that. Yeah. I haven't needed one for a while. Yeah. Like, I haven't needed one. Yeah. But it might might be good to have one. Yeah. No, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it depends what you want. I think because I mean, if you if you because I feel like I feel some people need a manager definitely. Some yeah. people need to be like guided, told what to do. It's not even guiding necessarily. It's like kind of what I was talking about like before the podcast started, where I was like, you want people to do things that are better than you at those things. Yeah. And yeah. if you think you can find someone who can be in your best interest genuinely and work with you and manage you, I think completely. Yeah, it'll be nice it. to get. Uh, it'll be nice to get someone that can help me with that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. Um. You know, when it comes to stand up and all that kind of stuff, that would be good. Yeah. But I don't want to get like an influencer agent mm. who's like go to this uh fucking red carpet event for a yeah. show that no one cares about yeah, yeah. you know like <laughs> you're not like, you know what i mean like go to this thing yeah that but, no one cares about yeah but <laughs> not that not that pe people do sorry people do care about these shows yeah but it's like you know go you go to these events of all these other influences there for the sake, like, yeah i mean i think for me for me it's like uh, for me what's been nice to see is for meeting more influencery people as my time and stand-up has woven and what whatever it's been nice to see people doing it not just for its own sake you know people doing it just not to get an audience because <clears throat> that is definitely a thing where people are like i'll post post pictures of me like on the beach or whatever just first it's getting followers and there's nothing wrong with using instagram and you know getting people to comment on your stuff like your stuff yeah. it's we're human that's the thing but it's like where people try to build a platform just for influencers sake that's uh, like oh, the thing where I'm like, fuck. But when you're actually trying to be creative, make stuff, it doesn't have to be comedy, whatever. Yeah. Even if you're trying to go viral doing pottery or crochet or whatever, like if you're doing something like that's the, that's for the sure. coolest thing for me to see. Yeah, when you're trying to like make stuff. You know? Yeah. And I think that's what I really want to do more than. Yeah. Cause I used to care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to care about followers and stuff. Yeah, fine. So here's the last question. So the tradition on the show, it's called Sweet Lemons. Way it ends. I ask you a profound question that you can engage with and however you want to seriously or <clears throat> or taking the piss. So the question is, 
what do you think your younger self would have thought of where you are now and who you are now? My younger self would have been in blown away by it. Really? Yeah. One hundred percent. But like uh you know, I thought I thought like I'd have a small audience at thirty years old. I thought mm. that's what would happen. And now like, you know, I've done okay. Um yeah, I don't know what you would have thought. Yeah, no, you thought. He would have been too cocky about it. <laughs> really? He would have been like, oh, sick. <laughs> oh, you're a god. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah, you fucking did it. Like, Yeah, yeah. And then he would have told everyone and ruined it. <laughs> he would have gone around, never guess what I'm doing in five years. <laughs> you know? Yeah, better than you. Better than you. Yeah. Than and he you. would have been such a dick and I would have lost all my friends. <laughs> like, it would not have been fun. I never tell your younger self what you would have been doing. No, definitely not. Because if it's not. shit as well, oh, <laughs> horrible to put that kid down. <laughs> By the way, in 10 years, you're going to be worse off than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a horrible thought. Yeah, imagine like saying that. <laughs> 10 yeah. years, you become this. Yeah, you know that job you don't want? You're going to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. That's a fun answer. Look. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been so much fun. I think you're hilarious. You're really fun to talk to. Isaac oh. HP, man. Thank you for coming on. I'll see you later, everyone. Bye-bye.